You are listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. And welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the communist state of Illinois. And yes, it is, uh, it is Illinois. I know I haven't released a whole lot of podcasts, uh, you know, recently, uh, but uh, getting back to that now. So if you haven't, uh, you know, followed up on that journey, please do uh, do that. You can go to that vanipodcast.com or youtube.com forward slash Liberty Under Attack, or you can just search Liberty Under Attack on YouTube and uh, catch up on my journey. But yes, I'm here in Illinois, uh, out here in the middle of nowhere, uh, recording from a mobile hotspot. So if there are any uh, audio issues or anything like that, there shouldn't be. But if there are, uh, you know, that uh, that would be the culprit. Um, but uh, but yeah, it is uh, it is Illinois. Uh, a lot of people think about Chicago and, and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm uh, about five hours south of Chicago. Uh, a bunch of rednecks down here out in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, we do we do what we want. Uh, so it's, so don't uh, you know don't don't think of it that way. But uh, anyway, on this podcast, we talk a lot about self liberation. Uh, obviously, well today I'm joined by a gentleman that I've been following for quite some time. I was a guest on this podcast for episode number ten. Uh, he's now on number fifty four. So that was uh, quite a while ago, and uh, I do feel bad for not reciprocating all that time. Uh, I, I I definitely definitely meant to because uh, his show is one of the few that I make time to listen to. Because uh, you know we're all busy, we're all busy, and uh, um, I've got to kind. Of, I, I unfortunately I've had to pare down the podcast I listen to. I used to listen to a lot, especially when I drove a lot, but uh, but I've had to pare him down a little bit. Uh, but uh, I certainly do make time to listen to uh, the Liberty Forge podcast because they focus on solutions. Uh, which is a rarity. It's been something I've complained about for quite some time, uh, that there's so much philosophizing, there's so much uh, uh, talking about uh, how Incapistan would function, and not enough focus on how we can be free uh, here in the present, uh, despite the existence of the state. So my guest today is Kyle Turnblazer from the Liberty Forge podcast. Uh, we'll talk about his path to anarchism, why he started the podcast, uh, his attempts to monetize it, and we'll get into a lively discussion uh, about jury nullification sparked by a recent episode of his. Um, I've uh, definitely been looking forward to this one since uh, him and I chatted on the phone a, a couple weeks ago. So Kyle, welcome to the Vani podcast, sir. Uh, how are things going? Shane, thanks so much for having me on, man. Yeah, it's it's been a while, but uh, yeah, glad to be on the mic with you again, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so you know, it's, it's kind of funny, man. So when I switched from uh, live radio to podcasting, this was Liberty Attack Radio, uh, I had your, your co-host, uh, Merrick Van Lanningham, on uh, as, a, as a guest very, very early on. It was like before, it was bef- you know, before episode 10. I don't remember exactly which one. And so we actually talked about state nullification and jury nullification. Uh, so now that you're on here, we'll, we'll be covering, uh, I guess, the, the latter topic again, jury nullification, uh, only on a completely different show. And uh, this was unplanned, honestly. I mean, I was putting together the show notes last night, and uh, I was thinking, uh, you know, what could be a, an interesting little discussion we could have? And uh, I you know, recently listened to your, your, uh, your interview with Bob Smiley, and I said, uh, oh, this could be fun. This could be fun. So um, it was completely unplanned. Um, I guess some folks might call that synchronicity or whatever. Uh, um, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I don't know. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. That's, well, uh, that's kind of what we're hoping to do as podcasters is just kind of like spaghetti on the wall. We just throw these ideas out into the ether, and it makes people think, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That is uh, that is definitely true. That is definitely true. So, um yeah, I guess uh, for, for those who uh, you know may not be familiar with you, uh, uh, my listeners uh, specifically – and also the folks out there on YouTube land. Uh, I guess why don't you, why don't you introduce yourself a little, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell the listeners uh, a little about who you are and uh, what you do. Well, my name is Kyle Turnblazer. I host a podcast called The Liberty Forge. Find all that at thelibertyforge.com. I'm just, you know, like you and a few of our friends who just get on the mic, talk about freedom and People have their own ways of doing it. That's fine. Whatever. I like to point out what the individual can do to forge his or her own liberty in their life, in their circle of influence, not, you know, glomming on to a collective and voting left or right or bitching about certain talking points on Facebook. Actually, like a lot of the topics we cover is uh, knowledge, skills, 
Uh, we talk about cryptocurrency, anything the individual can use to move the individual forward. We'll touch on it, man. Right on, right on. Yeah, and and I love that focus. Uh, I, I mentioned in the in the introduction that um, I love your podcast because uh, you know. Well, I mean, thank you. Ninety five percent of the episodes, it's like right on. I'm so happy you're talking about this subject. Journal notification. We'll we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll hash it out. <laughs> yes, we will. We'll have a good conversation about that. But I'm just so happy to see that focus. Uh, I really am because um, I mean I mentioned the philosophy. The, so many podcasts, you know, doing the philosophizing, but there's so many so many other libertarian podcasts that just bitch about the news cycle, and mm -hmm. um, it's. I mean, sure, you know, like that's a, that's that's an important step. Uh, it's definitely an important step. But I think what's even more important important than that is how we can find freedom now, um, as you said, within within our own sphere of influence. And uh, I'll be honest, you know, like so, I, I actually helped my parents move this this past week from uh, from Iowa, and uh, I don't know, my dad's a phone news watcher. And, uh, you know, obviously it was extremely frustrating. Um, you know, I was kind of a guest in their house. I wasn't going wasn't gonna to complain about it. But, um, <laughs> but uh, it you know, certainly it's, can be frustrating. Oh, yeah. God, <laughs> for, for, for like a, for a week, for a week. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's absolutely necessary what, what you're doing and uh, what, what we're doing here at the Vonnie podcast. Um, I guess uh, um, your, your podcast would be considered self, self liberational media. Um, there needs to be more of that uh, because, God, man, um, the the only solutions available in the mainstream, uh, well, they aren't solutions, are they? <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's pandering to certain markets. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's all it's all collectivists, and there's there's no real solutions there. Um, mm. The the only the only solution they offer is well, go to the voting booth, and uh, well, you don't really have control over that. Uh, you just don't, especially in, in um, you know, as as uh, you know, kind of uh, not the minarchist in me, but um, you know, what what would be, I guess, would be more important is local politics. But the only the only election that matters anymore is presidential election. And um, well, even even that, it's not a solution. It's one step in a marketing funnel for, you know, picking a ruler, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what's uh, that's what's what's so despotic. Not obviously the state's despotic in and of itself, but it's what's so despotic about the, the presidential election is the fact that um, people think that they go and vote for a president, and that's what actually elects them. Um, no, guys, just just, just newsflash. Just just as a point of uh, a point of fact here, um, the electoral mm -hmm. college chooses the president, not the electorate. Um, so your vote in a presidential election does not matter, and that's all that people really care about anymore, right? It's who's you know yeah. who's who's in that that uh, who's in that uh, you know that that throne. Um, you know, the, the ruler of the world. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway, anyway, a little, little digression there. But, uh, but the point is, what you're doing is, uh, is, is drastically, drastically important. And, uh, you know, I'm so happy to have you on and be, and be chatting with you, chatting with you today. So, um, I always like to hear, um, and, and I think most, most, most podcasters do this. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I always like to hear how people get to where they are today. Um, I know my, my path was very, very unique. Uh, most people that I have on their path is very, very unique. So, um, so, so tell us a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, how'd you get here? How'd you get to, uh, to anarchism? How'd you, uh, get to, um, I guess, uh, yeah, how'd you get to anarchism? Well, much unlike 90% of the people I meet that's any kind of libertarian, voluntarist, anarchist, or any of that, not through Ron Paul, believe it or not. Yay. Um, deal. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, uh, I was usually always not political at all. I mean, I, I was a self-destructive, selfish little shithead bartender back in the day. And from there, I mean, it's just, once I noticed the people around me starting to air quotes grow up and then get into social issues and what's going on and all this marketing that we're sold to participate in statism pretty much. Once I seen all of that, I was like, yeah, it don't make sense. It's not for me. Yeah, whatever. And I was just really cynical. Just tune it out. Yeah, it's not for me. It don't make sense. Whatever. And then I learned what podcasts were about seven years ago. Hmm. And then – and I found this one called the Survival Podcast. don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's ah, just a little, little small thing. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, small <laughs> small thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, uh, not small. <laughs> no, no, I found him, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a prepper because I'm a redneck, and I don't trust the government, and all my friends are stupid for being on blue team or red team and, and all that. So, um, yeah, well, I started there. And went through and then graduated from the school of Spearco, a kind of libertarian. And 
that was right around the time that he started talking about anarchy in, in I mean, regularly. I was like, yeah, I can't go with you there, man. I just don't know. And I, and I started to read more. Just uh, Rothbard, any, anything I could get my hands on, Libertarian, Ayn Rand, all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And as I slowly worked through it, you know how the joke goes, became an anarchist. And then a couple of years after that, I thought, that sounds fun. I was a bartender. I was a car salesman. I like to talk shit all the time. Why not buy a microphone, you know? And uh, just just put the time in and started learning. I mean, we talk about homeschooling on my show and the autodidaction. I just dove right in and for about six or eight months learned everything I could about podcasting and bought my gear and here we are. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a very unique answer. I, I don't think I've heard one person come on, uh, I guess, whether on LUA Radio or the Vonnie Podcast and say that Jack Spierko, um, you know, I guess uh, was, was one of the first steps to, to – to them coming to anarchism, um, but yeah, Ron Paul, yeah, we, it's a sour subject uh, for me. Um, <laughs> I'm sure yeah, it is. <laughs> hey man, I've still got them. this stand with, with Rand sticker on my motorcycle helmet. I haven't gotten around to covering that up yet, so don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I, I didn't mean, I didn't mean it in that way. I just, uh, no, I, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of the Great Man Fallacy. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, people people love their Ron Paul. Uh, he was a career politician. He's a copyright eleven status. Yeah, he tried to sue his own supporters over, over RonPaul.com. He went to the United sure. Nations. The United Nations called him a hypocrite. Um, so I despise him. And uh, I, I – especially after the, uh, the most the, – the, I guess the, uh, the so-called, you know, world's biggest freedom festival – um, when he mm -hmm. goes there and, and, and speaks, it's like for a week straight, it's just pictures with a P of, of an anarchists with Ron Paul. It's like you. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, anyway, um, but yeah, that, that's 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 an interesting path, man. It uh, it it definitely is. Uh, it definitely is. So so Spierko, then you you kind of did what I did and just read everything you could on the philosophy, economics, uh, all that sort of stuff. Then you, and mm -hmm. I guess at some point you realized that um, maybe there were some logical inconsistencies or, or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, man. The hardest thing for me to break <clears throat> was probably I've got a lot of friends that are veterans. And, you know, you jump in a Facebook group and everybody's like, ooh, baby killer bootlicker and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. It I'll be honest, man, it turned me off for quite a while. And uh when I was keeping an eye on the community, I just I wasn't saying anything. I was like, uh, ah. There's got to be some smart things to find when I dig through all this hateful shit. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it took a while to actually figure out that, you know, I could still be there for my friends that I, I already had that had these firm beliefs indoctrination as it may be. But these firm beliefs in statism and God and country and all this stuff, I just – it took me a while to figure out how to separate that. Right, right, yeah, and and that is that is a that is a little bit of a struggle. I mean, whenever um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess one person that was uh, un, I guess fortunately and unfortunately, I don't really want to say his name, but the you know the the the, the most popular the most popular YouTube uh, Canadian philosopher, um, but um, I don't <laughs> know. He, he he talked about he talked about something called defooing, and uh, you know I I, I had kind of. Um, um, there was he he had something called the against me argument, and mm -hmm. I you know thought at that time that I needed to kind of ostracize people who had you know who had violent beliefs or you know that believe in statism because um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know um, I, I kind of had had that idea that you know I couldn't be around these people, um, mm -hmm. but um, you know you, the, 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 there's some that you can I still when it comes to when it comes to cops um, no um, there's there's cops and lawyers in my family and. I don't associate with any of them. But as far as just people right. who have who have just the beliefs, um, you know, they're just you know they're average people, you know, working a job, taking care of their families, things like that. Um, you know, it's yeah, it's 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 yeah, disagree with a lot of it. Uh, definitely disagree with a lot of it. But um, you know, you can you can still have kind of relations relations with those folks, and uh, maybe some maybe a conversation you have with them um, will will kind of plant the seed. Um, I guess uh, uh, so, to, sure. so to speak. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my next door neighbor's a cop. I mean, he, you know, loves my children and I love his dog. His wife's a different story. She's kind of hateful, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's whether it's go along to get along or whether it's uh, like, I think I hold myself accountable to the strongest of my standards and my principles. And 
I don't really feel the responsibility to hold others accountable to my principles. But like you said, if they ask questions, I'm the first one in line to answer for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I guess that's another thing. Uh, and this was this was something that I I kind of had started doing, but uh, a guy named uh, Graham Smith, uh, he he runs uh, Voluntary Japan. Um, it was uh, it was something that he that he brought up, and for, for a while I just wouldn't bring up anything. Like I I knew that. Um, you know, people out, people are around, they don't want to hear about these, they don't want to hear about these things. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to hear about them. Um, so they'd have these conversations and, uh, you know, obviously I'd be sitting there, you know, just, just grinding my teeth, getting frustrated, not say a word, not say a word. <laughs> um, but obviously with diplomatic tact and all that, but, um, you know, I, I, I think, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, you know, like, uh, my, my beliefs, and my ideology are such a core to who I am. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 how I how I live my life, uh, as, as you're kind of uh, uh, you know going uh, as you were saying. So um, I don't necessarily hold back anymore, but um, I'm not just uh, you know just outbursts like I like I like I used to do. So everybody uh, goes through that phase, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, def definitely do. And it's funny watching, you know, new anarchists on Facebook. It's like, hey, I was there. I was there. Oh, how cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll check back with you in a year. Um, not, no, not, not, not really. I'll check back with you. But it, it's, it's just fun. It's, it's funny to see. It's, it's definitely mm -hmm. funny to see. Um, so the Liberty Forge. Um, so you, you kind of talked a little bit about it. Um, uh, so you, you started you started the podcast. Uh, you, you heard about podcasting. You said you like to like to talk and and uh, you know talk shit and all that. So you you, you, you started the Liberty Forge. Um, were, were there any other uh, I guess uh, motivating factors to that, or was it? Uh, um, could you could you speak speak more to that? Well, once I figured out that that'd be something I'd be interested in as a hobby, I noticed you know well there's people that are making money. That's fine. Someday maybe maybe I don't know. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, all right, well, I'm paying for web hosting. I'm paying Libsyn for audio hosting. I, I'm shelling money out. You know, I might as well learn something. You know, they always they say that you always pay for your education one way or the other. So I decided to try a few things, uh, learn about affiliate marketing, learn about – electronic products learn learn about all that and right now we're right now we're in the phase of building an audience i mean we've got a lot of really good people that listen and really good people that communicate with us and we've had a lot of really good people on the show you know i usually try to make sure it's <clears throat> definitely someone who can you know teach the audience a lesson or has something that they can provide the audience, you know, that's always important. But yeah, that, that's where we're at right now, man, is building. And I'm learning a few things like we've got affiliate, you know, sponsors. I'll do a read 30 seconds or a minute at the beginning of the episode, but it's stuff that we believe in. Like we push CBD, the actual CBD that Merrick and I and our families both use all the time. Um, we've got an ammo affiliate, a web hosting affiliate. I mean, it's, it's all kinds of stuff that we actually use and believe in and all that. So I figured if I was going to learn, I might as well start with what I know and right. what I know is what I use every day and I believe in. So, so yeah, it's, it's a learning process. It's a curve. It's, it's nice to log into the, uh, affiliate sites and see little spikes and where people have shopped around or browsed or anything like that that part's cool man i'm learning a lot about it right yeah yeah and uh i guess you know i've, I've been i've been uh, i guess i've been doing this since uh since 25 since uh, january or i guess february of 2015 and for the first couple of years i mean i had a full-time job and i had no interest in um i had no interest in monet and in monetizing it just had, had no interest whatsoever it wasn't really anything that crossed my mind I, I guess i didn't really i put you know donation buds on the site but i had never really cared about it um and I guess it wasn't until probably um, I don't know there there was there was a little bit of a push in 2017, but I didn't know what I was doing, um, had no damn idea what I was doing, and uh, kind of gave up on that pretty quickly. And then I guess it was towards uh, middle or end of last year I, I kind of decided that uh, it'd be nice to have a little side hustle with us. Uh, a little bit mm -hmm. of side hustle would be nice. Um, 
but uh, you know, as, as you're saying, you know, b building an audience is kind of the, the first step. Um, uh, I can't remember the actual statistic, but it's like one percent of people will. At, I guess like one percent of your listeners will. I, I don't know. It's a very small percentage of your listeners that will take action um, mm -hmm. on on the things that that that, that you. Uh, you know that you promote. Um, so I, I guess what what have you been uh, what have you been doing to to, to build your audience? Uh, what have you been doing to uh, to, to uh, I guess grow the Liberty Forge? Yeah, mainly um, the guests that we have on just have them share with their audience and bring their audience over. And I mean, we've had uh, you know Merrick, and Merrick is oh, yeah. has very strong opinions on war, the war state the military industrial complex, all this other stuff is very anti-war. So we had the great pleasure of having people like Janice Court Camp and Scott Horton great episode. on the show. Oh man, solid. And uh, I, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but Merrick did both of those interviews because that is his wheelhouse. That's another benefit yeah. of having uh, a co-host and doing these one-on-one -on -one interviews is just just back and forth like you take this one i'll take that one you know go team ready break all that stuff and i i love it man yeah yeah that and that's i mean that's one of um, i remember uh, i interviewed i think it was uh or maybe it was maybe it was his email maybe it was one of his facebook posts or email lists or i'm pretty sure he said i want to interview him and actually you know because the last interview you did was with uh, with him nathan frazier um was one of the best ways to grow a podcast is what you're doing right now um, mm. But uh, I, I do want to just toss out um, both of those interviews are absolutely fantastic. I also have the first one with, with uh, Janice um, out in uh, out in a tent in the middle of nowhere in Texas. Uh, <laughs> so oh, she uh, back in she January. is that was that was fantastic. It was such a dude. Good interview. She is doing great work. I cannot praise Janice enough. She's doing what needs to be done in Syria. Right. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely agree. Definitely agree. Um, so yeah, that's 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 one of the best ways best ways to grow a podcast. Um, just having having people like that on, having them share that with their audience, and uh, mm -hmm. I guess um, well, I guess we have Merrick. Um, <laughs> Merrick Merrick's fantastic, man. Um, he's he's he, he's fantastic. Um, I guess oh, yeah. with. I guess with uh, with the Vani podcast, Jason Booth and I tackle that together. But I mean, we, we've got our own we've got our own separate interests and uh, you know separate um, I guess uh, fortes. And uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to anything survivalist or off grid homesteading, it's like I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, Jason. You can answer them, <laughs> and that's, that's that's kind of his thing. That's kind of his thing. You know, I I lean on Merrick for a lot of that stuff too. I'm like, all right, I'm just this excited anarchist dude that used to be a bartender and car salesman, and I talk a lot of shit, and sometimes it can get really fast. But you have all the experience, so, and I lean on him for a lot of that. Like he's he's a teacher. He's taught everything from diving to firearms to self defense to, I mean, handling a budget. He's really good on that, man. Yes, yes, he is. And uh, one thing that I've, um, especially through podcasting, I mean, kind of off of the, uh, uh, off of the, uh, I guess, the side hustle thing for a moment. But um, when I, since I started the podcast, my, my, uh, I guess, my growth and my learning, my education, my true education has expanded so drastically. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, as as I've heard so many times in other in other in, in other in other areas uh, in, in other fields, the best way to learn is to to try to teach it. Uh, because in, you find out uh, where your weak spots are, uh, you find out uh, what you need to brush up on, and um, you know outside of just the the side hustle thing, um, even if mm -hmm. I never made any money doing this, um, the podcast itself has has expanded my I don't know my growth or it's 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 progressed my growth so much. Um, that it's worth it just in that regard. I, I, I'm curious if you've had any, if, if, if it's been similar for you. Yeah, my show, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> yeah, my show has definitely been a learning experience for me. And I don't say that all cliche like, I mean, the method you were referring to, a lot of people say even the US military uses this system. No once, do once, teach once. It really cements what you're trying to learn in there. And I figured if I learn something, I talk to Merrick about something and I publish it and tell other people something. It's very similar to the same system. So this is how I'm really cementing what I want to learn about cryptocurrency, what I want to learn about uh, successes and failures for liberty-minded on 
entrepreneurs. I just published episode 54 with Nathan Frazier, and that's exactly what we talk about. Like it, It's pretty nice having this little mechanism that if I want to know more about something, I shoot somebody an email. Hey, you want to get in front of my audience? I'd really like to teach them something, and you seem to be a professional. Let's do this. They're like, yeah, and I'm like, all right, selfishly, this is actually for me. A little behind the curtains is secret. A lot of people don't know that. This is definitely part of my learning process. It's that third step, the teaching. Right. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. Another side benefit of having a podcast is if, if you just email somebody, a lot of folks will respond to you. Um, you know, a, a lot there are a lot of a lot of people who are just so passionate that they'll they'll respond to you individually and you know answer mm-hmm. answer a bunch of questions, things like that. But when you have a podcast. Um, I was really surprised uh, at the, the the caliber of people I could get on. Just hey, you want to come and you want to come on the podcast and talk to my audience? Love mm-hmm. to. Let's do it. Um, I, I mean, it's 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 yeah. As you said, you know, I want to learn about something. Um, be beneficial for my listeners, and uh, you know, they they can get uh, a big a bigger audience too. It, it, it's a win win for everybody. Um, yeah. That's that's certainly certainly the case. Now, in regards to um, grow, uh, I guess in regards to building an audience more more on the kind of the side hustle path. Um, and I, I think this is one reason why, um, why there's not as much self liberational media, why there's not uh, as many podcasts uh, such as ours, is that when you talk about the subjects that we do, and we 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 are very 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 open with with where we stand on things. Um, a lot of people won't give you a listen just from the show description, and if they listen for five minutes, um, you know, a lot of folks will just click off. You know, so um, oh, I'm guilty of doing that too. Yeah, I, I surf episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean it's 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 hard to it's it means it's hard to build an audience whenever you whenever you talk about what you want to talk about when you learn about what you want to learn about. Um so that's that's another very big struggle um in monetizing uh you know uh, the Vonnie podcast or monetizing Liberty Forge. So um I I'm very I'm very uh curious. I mean you've got Merrick on your side. Uh, him and I I'm not going to not going to say much more about this cuz it, it it didn't pan out, but um there was uh, some business opportunity that we discussed uh, I guess towards the middle of middle of the end of last year and uh, I mean obviously it was like a 2 hour phone call. Um, I'm sure you're, you're well aware that when you talk to Merrick, it's, it's, it's a long phone call and you learn so much in just that conversation. Um, it always but, is. You think, you think the phone calls are long, get him on Skype <laughs> or I can, I can only imagine, can only imagine, but, um, I don't, I, but, uh, um, I, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's great to have Merrick, Merrick on board with that. I mean, he's, 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 I mean, he's, he's done a lot of, a lot of things in his life and he knows, uh, mm-hmm. he pointed out a lot of blind spots, um, and, and said business opportunity. And I was like, okay. Yeah, maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> maybe it's not a good idea. So, anyway, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it's good to have him on your have him uh, have him on uh, on the team for for the uh, oh yeah the business and, and marketing and that sort of stuff. Yeah, he's an invaluable resource, man, for sure. Right on, right on. So, I guess uh, before before I before I uh, I guess uh, transition to the next topic, is there anything else you want to talk about in regards to the Liberty Forge or um uh, or monetizing uh, monetizing the the podcast? Oh, no, like I said, man, we're still building an audience. I'm still <clears throat> trying to crank out useful stuff that I know I want to learn from. So I'm just guessing that if I put it out there, somebody else will want to learn from it too. And that's, I mean, that, that's part of our education. I think that uh, Zeno and Socrates and everybody else did the same thing. Yes, yes, certainly, certainly. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you, right there with it you. It sure so. beats government school, man. <laughs> oh gosh, this is fun. You know, podcasting is fun. Interviewing Scott Horn or interviewing a Janice, uh, Janice Corkamp, or interviewing uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's fun. It's a good time. Um, okay. And uh, you know, w- when you're when you're there voluntarily and you're you're enjoy and you want to do it, um, the education is just uh, so so much more worth it. And it's not propaganda either. Um, well, maybe it's propaganda, but <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe from a different from 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 a different pers- from a different uh, from a different uh, deliverer, I guess you could say. But well, uh, anything anything marketing is propaganda. Technically, if you want to get into correct definitions and all that, but I mean, eh, I don't I don't know. Pro- propaganda is not always bad. Some sometimes it's. Uh, catchy and marketing and all this other stuff but yeah i get it 
<laughs> right, right. Um, you know, government government propaganda is yeah, government propaganda is obviously bad. <laughs> well, we, if you're we, murdering we people that. with it, yeah, it's terrible. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly, exactly. Uh, so, so, so moving forward, moving forward here. So we've we've talked a lot about uh, van nomadism on this pot uh, on this podcast. Uh, the beginning of last year, we had uh, for about two months straight, we just talked about van nomadism. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, uh, you know, uh, whether it's a van, a car, uh, an RV. Uh, you know, traveling full time, uh, whether uh, individually or with a family, um, and uh, basically how to how to go about doing that, uh, how to convert a van, uh, how to make a, a living on the road, all of those things we covered. It's extremely in depth uh, for for quite some time. It was uh, one of the series here on the Vonnie podcast. Now you're you're in a very interesting position, Kyle. Uh, you are a, a trucker. You're on the road mm-hmm. a lot, uh, so you have mm-hmm. a, a a mobile lifestyle, mobile job. Um, you kind of combine combined the uh, the nomadism with, uh, uh, I guess, commercially, so to speak, and um, you've, uh, uh, I mean, you've 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 rig, you've, I guess, you've got your uh, your rig set up. Uh, you're, are you recording in your uh, mobile recording studio right now? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's ba- it's basically a boom arm that's screwed to the plastic trim in the sleeper, and it just kind of extends down in front of the laptop here i throw an atr 2100 in it and put my headphones on ready to go right on right on atr 2100 for any podcasters out there get it that's what we all use oh yeah for the money dude for the money yeah it's the best bang for your buck for sure can't beat it can't beat it anyway we're not sponsored by audio technic or anything like that but uh anyway (laughs) so so tell tell us a bit about uh about what you do uh on the road and uh and, and the lifestyle Oh, well, you know, just uh, hang out in truck stops and, you know, tell big fish stories mostly. No, that's uh, that's kind of what everybody thinks about truck drivers. They're dirty. They're mean. They cut people off in traffic. They're, they're slow. But uh, honestly, I love it. I've been doing it for a while. You know, I've, I've had I've been on and off, you know, local jobs driving and then over the road jobs driving. But. I've been back over the road for about three years now straight, and that really affords me the lifestyle I want to do what I want with uh, the Liberty Forge and other stuff like that. Now, I do have a family at home. I I get to go home for a few days every couple of weeks, and we do the family time stuff. That's very important, and I separate that from anything podcast-related or anything like that. Sure. However – when I am on the road, the government allows me to drive 70 hours a week, and okay, that's fine. But when I run into the end of that and I have to shut down and all that stuff, I can crack open the laptop, write a blog, network, record a podcast, all that stuff. I have the freedom to do all that stuff for about two weeks straight, and I've got the uh, <clears throat> I've got the truck – equipped with a little mini fridge and a microwave i've got two ways to make heat you know you said you and jason were kind of a prepper type two is one you know (laughs) right i mean i mean it's it's nailed man i I, i've i literally live out of this it is a mobile home it is a mobile recording studio it's it's what i guess you could say it's very 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 similar to van nomadism except for maybe it's part-time or maybe you'd say i'm kind of larping but (laughs) but yeah it's definitely tied to my full-time gig right right so i I guess uh, just a a couple aspects of this lifestyle that i'm curious about and we we talked a little bit about it pre-show but i think it'd be beneficial for the listeners uh so obviously if you're if you're living nomadically and you're doing online stuff uh, such as we are um requires two things um electricity and uh, you know an internet connection. So, uh, could you speak to those? Uh, um, how, how do you uh, how do you get electricity, and how do you connect to the internet? I have four big deep cycle twenty four volt batteries that are attached to the side of this truck, and <clears throat> you know that not only turns the huge diesel engine in here. I mean, I've got a fifteen hundred watt power inverter that powers, like I said, the fridge, microwave, all, all that stuff. But for the internet, much like you're well aware of, uh, Mr. Nomad, I just <laughs> I just hardwire the phone into the laptop and steal the 4G off of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and by the way, Mr. Nomad, yes, for for the past, I guess maybe six months or so, <laughs> it was yes. That is true. All the way down to Acapulco, Mexico. But uh, Yeah, I've seen that, man. Yeah. Hey, you you did it, man. Yes, yes. Um and I got out before shots were fired. Um un- yeah, and yeah, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um yeah. But um Yeah. Yeah, uh the Nomad lifestyle, I, I did it for a while and uh it was it was it was enjoyable, man. Uh, it really was and I, I did the uh the wilderness fauna thing in Texas for for about uh, I guess maybe a week before going to Acapulco and then um a couple of few weeks after that. Um so about mm-hmm. a month in total. And um Oh no, it's 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 definitely uh it's it's definitely freeing. I had uh, an opportunity here back in uh back in Illinois. So I uh the nomadism is uh kind of uh, cut off for now, I guess you could say. Yeah. But um with with the situ- with the way I've, I'm I'm set up now, um I I'll have a month or two to travel every single year. So um Very I can, cool. I can I can get that uh, get that uh, out out of the way. So you you've got a hot spot and uh do you have solar panels? Uh um I mean how 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 do those batteries get filled up? Oh no! It's atmosphere destroying diesel power, baby. That's all oh, I've got. So they charge up when the truck's <laughs> running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big super duper uh, from the factory, I guess. Just factory alternator on these eighteen wheelers are huge, and yeah, they'll charge four deep cycle twenty four volt batteries. Like you picture the big batteries on a boat, it's the same thing. There's four of them. Right. But but yeah, I mean, it charges while I'm driving. If I run the heater for 10 or 12 hours and <clears throat> the charge gets kind of low. I just, you know, run the truck for 30 minutes. It charges right back up. Right, right. You do realize you're destroying the environment, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I do it. I, I, I do it for the trolls. Right, right. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm, I don't know about you and other anarchists, but I like to do things when people tell me not to. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If someone's telling me what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the opposite. Of course, I'm going to do the opposite. Um, <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, I guess um, you know, I'm kind of cur- curious of this angle because there are a lot of folks who I'm, I'm not going to say a lot. Well, relatively a lot. Uh, we'll go with that. Relatively a lot of folks who would love to pursue a Vani lifestyle, whether it's fan nomadism or minimal sailboating or. Um, mm-hmm or perpetual traveling or something like that but the biggest hurdle is always income and it seems like you've you've i don't know if it was intended if it was the objective but you've kind of combined those into one you live nomadically you're in a different place every single night and you have found a way to 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 work it out so i think this this is an interesting uh now obviously it's not Mm -hmm. as uh you know rayo talked about back when he when he did the van nomadism thing before wilderness fauna the siskiyou national forest his big complaint was that the the lifestyle relied on or it was reliant upon slave tags like driver's licensure registration um now maybe oh, yeah. insurance and that was just too much for him but when you're doing this commercially um the oh and it's breathing way down more neck. regulated yeah, yeah. so yeah. that so so i guess for for Venuans it might not be for i guess for a hardcore Venuan like Rayo or even someone like me mm-hmm. um who's got diabetes as well and that just complicates things 10 yeah. times more um, well i'll, it's, it's, I'll it's, tell it's, you it's, this it seems if, like it's uh it would be a hard sell to Venuan, but but at the same time if the biggest hurdle is money and you want to live nomadically it seems mm-hmm. like an option well if and I'll tell you this from my experience of driving for a while uh, before even that I got involved in, you know, anarchist philosophy and individualist thinking and all that other stuff. And way before I even heard of Vanu or Van Nomadism, um, this is definitely a good way to make a living. If you want to see the country and parts of Canada for some reason, I don't know. But if you want to see more than your hometown or whatever it's definitely a good way to do that and make a little money it could also get you acclimated to driving i guess 10 or 11 hours a day or or whatever you need to do also what i like about driving a truck or living nomadically or whatever you know you want to call it is that i get to learn what i want to learn when i want to learn it we talked about audiobooks and podcasts and other stuff like that. And I know you're not supposed to be distracted while you're driving, but on some <laughs> empty highways, hell, I'll watch YouTube, man. It's I get to do what I want. I mean, Albert Einstein, even though he's a dirty socialist, had this theory that every serious scientist should pursue a job in a lighthouse. 
And I thought, well, that's crazy. Why would you do that? And then he goes into getting away from destructive biases, from government lobby groups, from other scientists that had a bias and all this stuff. He's like, nah, you get paid to work in a lighthouse, and then you could do your experiments all by yourself. If you want any help, you get to pick who helps you and when they help you. And I thought, holy shit, that's a truck driver. Right. Right, exactly, and, and and you may. I guess the, there there are a couple things I, I, I want to point out here, and the first is, um, one will one will be unrelated, and the other one will be, but will be will be with, with what you're talking about. But um, it seems like what you're doing is it'd be a great introduction to van nomadism because, as you said, getting acclimated to driving long distances, and you're you're mm -hmm. dealing with the same obstacles that van nomads do: electricity, Wi-Fi. Um, I mean, there, there are a lot of, there's, there's quite a bit that's overlapping there. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it, it might potentially be an option. And secondly, um, as for like, you know, talk, talk, you, you talk about, you know, listen to audiobooks and podcasts and, and learning and, and, uh, you know, learning while you're getting paid, you're getting paid to learn essentially. Right. It's awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I used, I used to work at a moving company. Um, no, I didn't do any of the over the road stuff or anything like that, but I was, I was a lead packer at uh, United Van Lines at one of the, one of their branches. And, um, I had, po I had, uh, you know, earbuds in. All day, every day. Um, I went through uh, Bill Cooper's. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're familiar with Bill Cooper, but I was uh, uh, my 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 path was conspiracies, secret societies, mm -hmm. Freemasonry, all that sort of stuff. But I was able to listen to like 12 hours of Bill Cooper a day, um, mm -hmm. just soaking up all sorts of knowledge. Um, some of it, some of it more useful than other than other knowledge. But anyway, I'm right there with you, man. Like if you have a job where you can get paid to learn, mm -hmm. I mean. What's better than that? Uh, what well, that, is better than that, that? That right there, that's that unfair advantage that successful people talk about. Mm -hmm. If you've got the time, make it work for yourself, man. And we like to talk about little hacks like that on the show. I mean, it could be side hustle related. It could be, hey, numb nuts, read this book. It's really, really good. It could be a number of things. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So, so I guess another piece of advice that we 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 would definitely pause it, and something you've paused it before in podcasts, I'm sure. But uh, if you can find a job where you can get paid to learn, something where you can uh, listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks all day, or something like that, even if the job sucks, like uh, you know the moving jobs I had, the moving job I had, um, you know there are advantages and disadvantages to everything. And uh, if you can mm -hmm. if you can get your education in while you're while you're working, I think that's a, a really really positive thing. Uh, at least yeah, and I, and it, <clears throat> yeah, and I'll say one more thing about it. I was driving locally, close to the house, had been for a couple of years, and we decided to homeschool both of our children. Well, the local job didn't pay enough. So we we talked it over for a very, very long time and decided that the money was on the road and we needed the money to pull our kids out of the government schools. Mm -hmm. And we made a commitment to do that. Now, the awesome trade-off for me, selfishly, is that I do get to spend all that time with uh, audiobooks. Just recently, uh, lots of Heinlein, a little bit of uh, going through Tom Wood's Meltdown and Real Descent. I mean, just just take your pick. It's, it's on there. It's on your phone. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing, man. It costs like 15 bucks a month. It's the greatest. But that's what I get to do now. Right. Right, and uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, being being on the road away from your family is it's it's got to be hard. It's got to be hard, but at the same time, what you're learning, what you know, what you're learning, um, I mean, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna benefit your your, your children, right? Um, the things sure, that you learn, yeah. the the experiences you have, um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's I I think that's uh, it's it's a positive sacrifice. In fact, that you you and your wife decided to get your kids out of the government schools. I think that's that is huge. I, I posted uh, probably a couple months ago. That uh, you know the the greatest gift of love or the greatest ex expression of love you can give to your children is not to send them to a government indoctrinator for eight hours a day or something like that. Um, yeah, that's, well, that's it's child huge. abuse, man. Mm -hmm. I, I I would have to agree. Yeah. Um. So major major props to you on that. I mean, you're 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 doing it. Um. You're not uh, just someone you know for doing a podcast and talking about these things. You're actually doing it. So well, uh, actually, Lysander Spooner said once that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a time and a place for that, but I mean, our whole life can't be sophistry, right? 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so we're about, uh, oh, I guess maybe 40 minutes into the podcast or so. Now we should probably get to the jury nullification thing. Um, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. For it. I'm, I, and great, I, great, I don't want to cut that off or anything, but I'm sure the listeners like, well, he's dimension jury nullification, you know, argument or debate or conversation or something. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's get to it. Why don't we? So, um, so I mentioned that Merrick and I had this conversation. Uh, I guess it would have been uh, maybe um, I don't know, two two and a half years ago, something like that. Um, not not very good with time. Um, <laughs> thankfully, um, the, I, thankfully the past past few years, time and days and and things like that haven't been a, a major factor for me. So I, I have trouble I have trouble keeping track of it. But uh, so jury nullification. Um, I listened to your episode with Bob Smiley, and um, I will say it was interesting discussion. Um, Interesting discussion. Obviously, I disagreed vehemently with most of it, um, which is okay, uh, right? So it's okay. It's okay. Adults are allowed to do that. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Reasonable <laughs> people can disagree, and and still and still be you know cordial and, and all that. So, um, I, guess, I guess first off, um, I, I guess uh, uh, what what are your uh, uh, what are your uh, I guess your your views on jury nullification? Um, do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing? Um, do you think the the activism involved is is a, is a net positive? I mean, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start with that. Personally, I think it's a great thing for some people to be doing. Absolutely. I mean, for any kind of battle for free, liberty minded people to win against the state, it's probably going to take more than one fighting group, right? The van nomads aren't going to win liberty for everybody on the planet. The truck driving podcaster libertarians aren't going to win liberty for everybody on the planet. So, I mean, the more angles and flanks that that people can attack this monster from, <clears throat> I think it's the better. And yeah, man, I, I really do think that a lot of the the people that actually go through the jury process, I know it's a statist, dirty injustice system. I get that. However. I think sneaking behind enemy lines and actually getting the chance to set someone free that's been accused of a victimless crime isn't really a bad thing because in that situation, that person isn't really wielding the power of the state to hurt somebody that doesn't need to be hurt. And me personally, that's not where my time and effort goes, but I do think that some people should probably be out there doing that. Sure, sure, and I guess I guess I'll start by saying that if if you know jury jury you know jury nullification you know the jury system it's coercive, um, it is it's coercive to the core. Um, I I actually got uh, this was as part of uh, it was just very again I guess synchronicity. I don't I don't really know if I believe in that sort of thing, but um, you know some people would say it was. But I started my political field trips, and um, basically that's uh, experiencing government firsthand. Is for those folks who. Um, you know, aren't anarchists yet, and uh, it's it's just a way like, okay, so you believe in the state, go, um, you know, go spectate, uh, you know, go spectate uh, uh, a court, mm -hmm. go spectate in court, go, um, you know, go to a, a county board meeting, go to, you know, try to experience government firsthand, the, the idea, and the, the obviously the goal, well, not really the goal, it's it's based on people's experiences, um, but uh, I guess the goal for promoting it is that when people actually witness government firsthand. Um, they'll realize how despicable it is. Well, when I was starting these these sorts of things, I'd already canceled my voter registration, and uh, wouldn't you know it, a month later, a jury summons came in the mail. Um, mm -hmm. And I did a bunch of research, couldn't find out what the punish punishment was for not going, so I decided to go. Um, I think it was just contempt of court. Um, but anyway, I, I went. I actually served on the jury, and uh, it was an assault. It was, I guess, a, a battery case because um, mm -hmm. the, the, the legalese, you know, assault you'd think would actually be the beating, but it's actually battery. That's uh, when you physically harm somebody. I think, if I remember correctly. Um, so it was actually, you know, it was actually a violent thing. You know, there wasn't much to nullify there. Um, so I, I made it through the void air process, and I just, I, I mean. Yeah, it was just uh, um, I had, I wasn't a big fan of journal notification <clears throat> then either, but I mm -hmm. <clears throat> I I kind of thought you know if I if I could nullify I would, but violation of person, eh, I don't know about that, right? You know I I can't really do anything. Yeah. I, 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 I guess I'll just uh, you know consent or you know uh, uh, acquiesce or, or whatever terminology you want to use. So. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've I've served on a jury. Hope I never have to do it again. Um, but it's coercive. Um, it is coercive. 
Um, sure. The, the actual act of journalification, I don't think it's activism. I think it's more like pacifism um, because you can't just go and volunteer to be on a jury. You have to wait for the state to call upon you. So no matter how badly you want to be called, you know, be someone as a juror, you just got to wait on the state. Um, there's no direct action about it. There's no um, taking initiative yourself. Um, there's nothing like that. It's just waiting on the state. Um, so that would be that would be kind yeah. of my, my 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 first complaint against it. And I'll, I'll I'll let you respond to that if you have anything. Yeah, and that's why the activists, you know, hand out pamphlets in front of the courthouse to catch these people and be like, hey, take ten minutes to read up on your rights, or I don't know, whatever the catchphrase is. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, you are right. The jury selection process is absolutely coercive. That's the only way they know how to operate. It's all coercion. And like I said about holding myself accountable to my own principles and not holding other people accountable to my own principles, that's kind of the way I look at it. Like, hey, man, if you want to get in the fight and do that because you've been coercively called, I mean, you're going to go one way or the other because you don't want to get thrown in a cage or, you know, get a – bench ward or anything stupid like that but you know you're going to go one way or the other and the way that you're going to look at it is geez i really don't want to be here i'm just going to say some dumb shit off the top of my head so they won't select me or you know a person can say ah, you know what i might be able to salvage this shit storm and set an innocent person or two free today and if they want to take that and put that on their shoulders and actually try to effect change without using government force to hurt anyone. I mean, they're being coerced into being there in the first place. Yeah, I get that. But dealing with what you call the first realm and handling these shitty situations, I mean, it's more of a tactic than a principle, really. I mean, at that point, I'm glad those guys are there. Sure, sure. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think any anarchist, um, you know, at that time I was, I, I was an anarchist, but I was going through my political field trip, just my political field trips, just to make sure. And, and one of that component is actually mm -hmm. attending a, like a, attending a reformist meeting, like Libertarian Party, the anti-Libertarian Libertarian Party, which I did, and it was terrible. Um, oh, it'll make your stomach was, turn, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but, <sighs> but anyway, I mean. Yeah, so I, I don't think any anarchist would, would go in there and say, you know, I'm just not going to do – like if they're familiar with journalification, it's like, yeah, I'm in this shitty situation. Um, if I can save someone from a drug charge, I might as well do it. You know, like it's, it's – if you're in that position, you, you might as well you, – you know, obviously, you, you might as well do it. And I think uh, if you're in that position, you get you get you you make it through the void of your process and you're selected as a juror. Um, I, I, I think it's it's – I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't fault anyone for just saying, I want to get out of this. I want to get out of this government, this, I want to get out of this government courtroom. Like, I just can't deal with this anymore. Like, fine, guilty, oh, sure. get me the yeah. hell out of here. Um, yeah. I, I can understand both sides. Um, but for me, you know, I went in there and I said, <clears throat> if I have the opportunity, um, I'll do it. Um, just, you know, not that I was really in, in, in favor of the activism itself or anything like that. But if you're in that position, you might you might as well do it. Um, so, so speaking of Vaughn specifically here, I mean, <clears throat> I I don't know. Um, obviously, the activism here is the passing out of passing out of pamphlets, you know, educating jurors. Uh, yeah. I guess there, there's one major, um, I guess, major not complaint, but major um problem I, I see with that um so the, the the random person that you you pass a pan, you, you hand a pamphlet to on the street you know, if they take five or ten minutes to read it and might do a google search mm -hmm. or two um and they say you know like hmm, i didn't know about this you know maybe i'll try to do this well in my experience the first thing the judge says to you when you get when you go when you begin the jury selection process is you you you're only judge you you can't judge the facts of the case or the law or you you you, you only judge the facts of the case not the law itself or something like that that's what we that's what you're here to do the average individual yeah. who's not an anarchist will probably be dismayed by that right away like well this must be bullshit <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> well, guess I'm guess I'm just judging the facts of the case, not the law itself. All right. Well, I'm here. The guy had marijuana on marijuana. He was possessing marijuana. Guess I'm go. Guess I'm voting guilty. That's the first. The first kind of uh, hurdle is these aren't principled people. These are just your average Joes yeah. in the street who are status. And if a judge, you know, the authority figure in the room, um, you know, their daddy figure, um, uh, they're probably going to listen to him. 
right? Um, right. I'm not saying that. that. That doesn't take anything away from the activism itself. It's just a problem I see. Um, I, I guess secondarily to that is <clears throat> I've seen too many like people passing out pamphlets and being harassed by pledges. Um Some arrested, some not. Uh, but anyway, mm -hmm. it seems like it's, uh, you know, there's, I think it's jury tampering is what they try <laughs> to hammer you with, um, is yeah, jury tampering. So as far as Vanu, passing out pamphlets at a courthouse seems like a bad way to be it's it's it, it seems like it makes you more vulnerable to coercion um, oh yeah it's two, it's two different schools does. of thought mm -hmm. sure yeah and i mean you're you're probably not some kind of activist i know i'm not you know act, activism's not my thing although some people could say podcasting oh well you're pushing an ideology no, 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 whatever no this is my learning process i'm trying to help people like Activism is going to the courthouse and handing out pamphlets. And I guess to both of your points, man, um, as an activist, I think they kind of look at it as as you do. As you said earlier, when, uh, w when you're marketing, you get 1% of people that actually take action on your items and all that stuff. That's uh, the law of averages. And sure. for them out there doing that work, Bob and Eric and all those guys <clears> – <throat> I'd say if they can hit that one percent, they would consider it a win. Like, like that's what they're driven to do. Yeah, God bless them for it. I mean, I, I don't do that. I'm way too busy in my my own way of delivering a message, and and you are too, and that's great. But uh, oh shit! Well, what was the second point that you made? Um. Yeah. May, uh, may, makes you more vulnerable to coercion. Uh, yes, being harassed by cops and maybe being arrested, yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and you said that they get harassed by cops when they're handing out pamphlets on the courthouse steps. Um, I actually got to meet a couple of these activists down in Dallas. I played poker, drank beer with them. I mean, great crew. The 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 ones that I met, anyways. And uh, they seem like that anarchist type we were touching on earlier. When somebody tells them not to do something, they do it. So <laughs> I don't know. That right. part actually sounds kind of fun. <laughs> sure, sure. And, 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 you know, and, and, you know, as Ben, ben Stone said in his book, uh, and I don't think he really touched upon chair nullification all that much. Maybe I'm, forget maybe, uh, maybe I'm just not remembering. But, um, you know, there, there are those folks who, who crave that direct confrontation. And I would say that some of these journal nullification folks, at least the, active, the activists who pass out pamphlets, um, you know, maybe some of them are hoping for that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I, and, and that's, that's certainly fine. Um, I'm obviously not dismaying things that could help innocent people. Um, sure. ob obviously not. There's, I'm not going to do, you know, there's, there's all, uh, it's kind of libertarian party thing, right? There's, there's, you know, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of different paths to, 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 to a free society. And it's like, no, that's, that's. Well, you know, I, I differentiate the jury nullification process, activism, all that stuff from the libertarian party, because as you like to call the non-libertarian libertarian party, they are still using the coercive hammer of the state to try to push forward their brand of air quotes freedom. Like they're still politicians. They're still dirty, dirty statists. Sure. Somebody that's telling jury members that they can, you know, vote not guilty if it's weed or some something like that. That's not really using the power of the state. So I mean I'm I'm definitely cool with it. And other kinds of activism, as long as you know, no one's wielding the power of the state over anybody to get their agenda across. I, I can, I can, <clears throat> how do I want to say that? I can see what they're doing and I can respect their angle and like how they're operating without thinking, oh, gee, I want to do that myself. Nah, I'm just glad people are are doing that and and getting their own message across and doing it in such a way that doesn't use the state to hurt their neighbors. Sure, sure, yeah, and, and yeah, and I'm I and yeah, I I agree with that. I I I would agree with with most of that. Um, uh, I definitely would. Um, I, I guess the, the the crux of my the crux of my criticism here, and I, I guess we'll, I'll, I'll 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 wait for that, but. Um, I, you know, I love agorism, right? Um, I love agorism. Um, I think mm -hmm. people, people, op you know, consciously and purposefully breaking laws, um, for whether for, for personal empowerment or, um, advantage or because they just hate the state so much that they feel like they, sh they, they need to. 
Um, but I'm also an advocate of security culture and um, basically <laughs> keeping yourself out of a government dungeon, uh, the jails, uh, prisons. And yeah. I guess with I, I guess the, the I guess the main point of this is that journalification activism passing out pamphlets is not Vanu in the least sense. Um, it's definitely not. Oh Vanu. no, it's certainly not. <laughs> it's yeah, definitely yeah. Not. no, 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 and that and that's a difference of tactics. Sure, that's a difference sure. of tactics. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, so this would be kind of the the, the first the first the first major uh, major argument. And the second would be that. Obviously, uh, I, I'm, I'm against reformism. I'm against trying to change this, change the system from within. Um, I think that's a stupid strategy. I think people would have more success um, in infiltrating the KKK and turning it into the NAACP. I think that'd be that'd be easier to do than changing <laughs> the state apparatus into something that's freedom loving, uh, considering right. its basic its basic principles. If it if you can say it hasn't, well, it has principles, right? It's just uh, you know uh, yielding the um, the the, the uh, power of coercion and force to um, to subjugate individuals. I guess that would be their their main principle. Um, but I, I think that uh, uh, journalification just it, it's just reformism. Um, it's tr it's it's just another 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 avenue of that. Um, so <clears throat> I guess yeah. I mean journalification. Uh, you're you're trying to nullify laws. You're trying to change the system. Um, mm -hmm. It's not, uh, as I said at the beginning, it's not taking energy of yourself um, and, and increasing your own freedom. It's going into their courtrooms, obviously coercively, and trying to nullify laws. It's trying to change the system from within. Um, I, I, I don't yeah. know how someone could consistently say that, you know, um, that, uh, you know, voting or uh, something like that. Um, has no chance of increasing freedom, and then on the I guess on the other hand, advocate that journalification could actually, um, as a strategy, um, be a way to fight back against the state or increase increase uh, increase freedom. Yeah. So, well, your yeah. argument isn't that it's like violent, coercive, and bad as much as is it's ineffective and it's not it's a, a good way to spend your time. Okay, yeah, I get that. Right, right, and I guess also too, uh, just just talk about talk about I guess principles here. Um, I, I I like I said, I think it's another 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 strategy of reformism. Now, obviously, if you're coercively, um, if, if you're coercively uh, summoned to to serve on a jury, um, I think uh, um, yeah, that's 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 different than passing out pamphlets. Um, I, I still sure. think that the the activism of journalification, passing out pamphlets at the courthouse. It is reformism. I mean, you aren't uh, taking you you aren't taking the issue of yourself to increase your own personal freedom. You are out there trying to um, change laws, or um, um, and, and if not change laws, then basically uh, you use the coercive apparatus. Um, mm -hmm. You use that use that coercive apparatus against itself, at least in in some way, um, by just voting not guilty or whatever. Um, I, I still think it's a strategy of reformism, and I think just as with voting. Um, I think it's still a violation of of principles. I think it's inconsistent, um, as as Conkin said. You know, means uh, uh, you know, ends means consistency. Um, mm. I, I I just um, I, I think it's inconsistent principle wise as well. Um, just the, the activism itself. Yeah, well, that's that's their problem. Honestly, I mean that that's the selfish way I look at it. Like if if that's a waste of their time, yeah, it's their problem. But if it's something they enjoy doing because they want to help one or two people uh, i can't see where they're hurting anybody so sure. i generally don't have a problem with it sure sure i guess the, the last thing i'll say like uh, obviously i think this was your your response and i wasn't going to respond to it. i was going to save it for our discussion it's basically that they aren't hurting anybody by doing it and therefore mm -hmm. um there's 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 nothing wrong with it well as i as i kind of yeah. uh, alluded to earlier um people voting the presidential election um they're not hurting anybody because their vote has no damn influence on who, on who gets selected anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So by that rationale, it would be perfectly okay for people to vote for presidents because it's not hurting anybody. It's completely irrelevant. Well, I guess the advocacy is different, right? The advocacy is different. Um, if you're, Ad if, yeah, the advocacy is, is far different between ad, you know um, saying that someone should you know nullify uh, pursue jury nullification versus um, you know electing a president, but just yeah, versus actually signing off and giving your permission and consent to being ruled over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, That's sure. much different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I suppose so. I guess just the rationale, like, it's the, the rationale that's not hurting anybody. Well, it's not hurting anybody to vote for a president either because that doesn't actually like the president. Um, but yeah, well, but but one one is trying to with one is attempting to even if the strategy is bad, one is attempting to strip away power or save someone from the government dungeons. Whereas one is obviously the complete opposite of that, right? The the the, the president yeah. election. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument there to be made for moral agency. Like, if your candidate wins, that's fine. Your name gets to be written on that bomb that the U.S. sells to Saudi Arabia that hits a school bus in Yemen. Like, you lend your moral agency out to these sure. people. You have to sign off on that. You put your name on it. Right. Now, if you sneak in behind enemy lines to a to a jury, eh, I don't know, man. If you're Right. Yeah. It's 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 different. Yeah. It's it's different. Mm -hmm. Um. But I I guess the the, the I guess the the argument um the argument itself it's not hurting anybody. Well, well I yeah I, I guess you're right. One one's withdrawing and one's uh, I guess one's trying mm -hmm. to to one's trying to I guess lessen and one's empowering. So, mm -hmm. um, fair enough. Fair enough. Um. Yeah. Fair enough. So, um. I guess those are my main arguments. I guess maybe I just I, I guess uh, uh, since my main focus now is Vanu, um, that's kind of the uh, the primary one. It makes you more vulnerable to coercion. Um, yeah. But but yeah, at the same and, time, I I still think there's a, a, a there's a, a I still think it's reformism. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, you're you're taking a strategy that I I very much take as well. I try to take in all the information I can. I try to learn everything I can learn about. Uh, things like jury nullification. What are these crazy activists doing? Things like cryptocurrency. What are these people fighting over Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash doing? Um, why is Craig Wright the devil? There's a good one. You know, all these things. I want to learn about it. Sure. And I and I focus on my own way to make my own life and and the lives of my family as free as possible uh, in this little sphere that I can control. And that's about all that we can do. I mean, we can, you know, discuss ab about what principles are in certain situations like jury nullification voting and all that good stuff. And that's fun. But at the end of the day, you know, if your path is Vanu, great for you, man. You are going to get a lot of freedom out of that. And if my path is, you know, staying off the radar and homeschooling and all that other stuff, you know, that's that's where I'll go. And at the end of the day. Dude, those are both great, great ways to go. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, and I was just talking to uh, to Jason Booth about Jason Booth about this uh, a couple of few weeks ago. Is that even what even, up, Jason? Even even Vanuans, um, like it, it's really awesome to watch. Um, I, I guess there there's some some people who have taken up Vani was like their lifestyle, and uh, just to watch. I mean, it's a different path than mine. Um, it's a different path than mine. But just to watch them, like we're running in parallel, right? Um, we're running in parallel. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, what they're reading, what they're, what they're taking in, what they're doing is different than what, I, what, I, what I'm doing, what I have done. And it's just incredible to watch. Um, it really is. So, um, and, and same, same with, same with you. I don't have kids, so I can't do the homeschooling thing. I'd love to someday if I can uh, find a woman to settle down with. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, different, uh, um, different paths, different paths. Uh, and, and, and it's, and it's beautiful path. how they rhyme, huh? Yes, exactly. exactly I love right. it, man. Yes, yes, I do too. So we're we're at about an uh, about an hour and six minutes now, hour and seven minutes. So um, I guess uh, do you have any uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, anything you'd like to uh, to plug for the listeners uh, before we uh, close this out? Well, I I love what you're doing. I love that Jason's doing it with you. And yeah, man, <clears throat> if Vanu is your thing, dig into it, learn as much as you can, and actually practice it. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything I can help you with over at my show, thelibertyforge.com. I mean, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all, all the all those. I think we just – yeah, we just went on Spotify a month or so ago. So check that out, definitely. Um, like you said, the jury nullification episode, it's up. It's number 53. Uh, Nathan Fraser's on for number 54. I mean I love having this different variety of guests on, man, because sure. I'm sure that people in my audience are as curious as I am about just any kind of scattershot topic that I can pick for the day. And, yeah, I guess everything can be found at thelibertyforge.com. 
Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. It was, a, it was a great conversation. I guess I'll just tease for the listeners here that there might be some sort of collaboration between Liberty Forge and Liberty Attack Publications uh, here Perhaps. in the future. We, we, we've, still, we've still got uh, some discussions to be had and, and some things to be ironed out, but maybe there just might be something like that for the, for the listeners to look forward to. Uh, but Kyle, mm-hmm. thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, it was a great conversation, and uh, we disagreed. But we're, we made it to the end, and it was still cordial. Um, oh, wow. That's <laughs> Yay! Crazy, right? <laughs> That's How awesome. does that happen? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's amazing when you get two adults on the microphone who aren't very intellectually lazy. I love it, man. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah. thanks for having me on, man. This was great. Hey, not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. So, uh, so folks, um, definitely go check out the Liberty Forge. Dot com and uh, yeah dig through the archives uh, definitely dig through the archives go to uh, to the market section and uh, you know uh, if you're buying something through Amazon if you're doing whatever just go to the market and uh, if you're trying to buy ammo trying to buy CBD definitely go do it there and I'll put all the links to the show notes um, thank you so much for listening thank you so much Kyle for coming on and uh, yeah as uh, always in the show with Bonnie was yours with the making thanks guys talk to you later